friends, welcome to Stay Stitching and to Vlogmas Day 2. Alright, so what am I wearing? There'll be some hilarious footage, footage at the end of the video of me trying to model outside. Um, and so you'll be able to see it, you know, with me standing up and the wind whipping around. Um, but what I am wearing is Simplicity 1198 View A. I've made several of these. I've made View A, View B, and View E. I wear them all the time. Um, my View B one is way too big. This summer I'm going to have to take in the collar. I think I'm just going to put a box pleat in the back and just wear it like that. Um, this one, because I went down so many sizes and because this fabric does not have a whole lot of stretch, is too small for me to actually wear by itself out in public. And it's too sheer. So this top, even though it came out really well, um, there's nothing wrong with it, I would classify as a complete fail. It's not uncomfortable. It's not uncomfortably tight, but it's way too um, tight to wear by itself. And it's a little bit sheer. So I will wear this, it has three quarter sleeves. The way that I will wear this, this winter, is underneath all of our logo t-shirts that we have for school, um, because it has a cute hem, and so it'll look a little bit dressier. And then I can wear it with this um, kimono, uh, which I love. And the kimono is Simplicity 8419, and I made, View A. View A is supposed to have trim down the front, and I had some beautiful trim that would go with this, but I opted not to put it on there. I just wasn't sure that I would like it. In hindsight, and if you decide to make this, and if you come up with some of this beautiful peach skin like I have, um, I kind of feel like the trim down the, I'm assuming it goes around the back of the neck. I don't know what that for. No? Anyway, it doesn't matter if it goes around the back of the neck. I think if it's, even if it starts here at the shoulder seam, it would help hold this in place. So I think the trim would be a good thing. Her, the kimono on the pattern, hers is um, made out of burnout velvet. So it's gonna be a little bit of a weightier fabric than this one. So that's what I'm wearing. So what are we gonna do today? Um, I thought we might go through box number three um, of my stash. And um, I think that's one way that I can get through Vlogmas if I run out of content because we, we go to work, we come home, we eat, we hang out, we do a few things, we go to bed. That's, I mean, our life is not very stimulating and that's how we like it. We're not busy, 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 go, 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 do, do, do people because I like to be at home in my pajamas. And so um, we'll try to do some interesting things just for you guys um, so that you don't have to watch an entire month of us sitting around our house. So let's look at this fabric. This is box number three. All the eights on the boxes, when we moved into this house, I had everything labeled, all the boxes labeled with the room number. And um, then that way the movers could figure out where to put everything. Um, they did a mediocre job of getting things in the correct room, I'll say. Mediocre. Oh, okay. This is a wool crepe. It's lovely. It's a navy blue. It is a true navy blue, but it's not a dark, dark navy. It's the lighter navy. Um, Wow. I love this. I don't know. I have, so, I, I don't know if I can let this one go. This would make a great coat. It would make a great jacket. You could make lined pants with it. It's got enough drape. You could make culottes with it. Um, it's a light to midweight. Ooh. Hmm. I don't know. I kind of, half of me says I will never sew with it because I don't want to take care of it. And the other half says it's so beautiful and it's such a basic and it's such a gorgeous color. 
and I love crepe. I'm going to leave that in my lap and think about that for a minute. This is a fun kind of a Fowlard print. This is a pure cotton. This came from, there's a vintage, there's a vintage price tag on here. This is vintage fabric. Um, it's from Pennies. And it says four for a dollar. I don't know what that means. This feels like two yards to me at least. This is beautiful. I think this would make a gorgeous shirt. Burgundy and gray. I'm not doing very well this time. I'm not sure about that one. This is a wool knit. It's a wool jersey. This is the back of it we're looking at. In a nice rusty red. I'm going to keep this one. This one I'm going to make a cardigan out of. I need that. I love that color. This is, um, I ordered this new. This is, um, I ordered this because I was going to make a black and white walkaway dress. And this is called Rodeo Cotton Solid. Um, It's like a file weave. I never did make that walkaway dress. I've heard so many bad reviews about it. Um, there's three yards of this. I'm gonna keep this. I love white, love wearing white. Oh, this is beautiful. This is a gorgeous velvet. It is a marbled or feather pattern. I believe this is a 100% cotton velvet, which is my favorite kind. Feels like there's probably two yards there. Oh my goodness. Man, I bought some beautiful fabric. Oh, this is beautiful. What would I make out of that? Like a shift dress or something? I've been wanting to buy Jennifer Lauren's afternoon tea dress pattern. Um, I bought her Sorel dress in her Kickstarter campaign and that got me looking at her website and all of her patterns and I love her aesthetic. I think I would wear every single pattern that she's made. Um, and the afternoon tea dress is kind of a shift dress with some gathers or a box pleat at the back. And it has a fun kind of a detail here. And I wonder if that wouldn't be a super cute. All right. This one's, ha I have to keep that one. Okay. So this is a lilac gauze. This is just a nice lilac gauze. It's a beautiful pale gauze, probably a couple of yards here. Um, I think I can let that one go. I'm not a real purple wearer. And this one might be a little too pastel-y for me as well. Um, so I think I'm going to let that one go. Oh, this... I've got a lot of this. This is beautiful. I don't think I'll let this go. This is 100% cotton gauze with a woven um, embroidered uh, stripes in it. Looks like ribbon. I think this is just a fun, such a fun basic for the summer. Anything, a beautiful, 
um, peasant top or a light flowy dress or a really great skirt. I don't know if you could quite get away with pants out of that. This is 100% cotton. This is a rib. It's a tube. And um, this would be perfect for cuffs or I have sewn um, t-shirts and stuff out of this and this is a nice weight. I'm keeping that one for sure. This is my favorite color. This is a fine um, cotton broadcloth. I think I might put this one in the store. Just because nothing's coming to mind for me, it would make a, a great blouse or a nice little dress. But I think I can let this one go. This is beautiful. This is vintage. It's 100% cotton. There's a couple of yards here. Hmm. See, some of these that are my favorite colors and that I just love the pattern of, I'm not 100% sure right now because um, you know what? One of my commenters had a brilliant suggestion with my first video of going through the stash. She said, why don't you ask people to put down below if they're madly in love with one of the fabrics? And if they're madly in love with it and they know what they want to make with it, maybe that will help you let go of it. And so for, I guess for any of these fabrics, if you're in, it's, they won't be more than $5 a yard. Um, I, maybe the wools and stuff like that. I do usually charge a little bit more than $5 a yard for wool. Um, but if you are madly in love with one of these and you know what you want to make with it, put that down below. That might help me decide that I can let it go and put it in the shop. And so this one, I love the colors, but I am just not sure. And here I am wearing this and I'm going to say that this is too busy for me. I don't know how to, I don't know how to make sense of of what I'm saying, but I'm gonna let this one, I'm gonna put that one in the shop. This is just a plain white. This is good for lining. It's just a cotton, a very fine cotton. It might be a broad, uh, poly cotton broadcloth. It feels good. Uh, that's just a lining fabric. That's not special enough to put in the store. Oh, this one, I remember I was really mad because I had to pay a lot for this one. Um, for thrifted fabric, I thought they had the price way too high. This is an upholstery fabric and, um, I think it would make a gorgeous structured dress or pencil skirt. I don't know how much there is. I paid much more than I usually do. Um, I still would let it go probably for $5 a yard, um, and I do think I can let this one go. I still love it. I just don't picture me sewing with it right now. And here, the way that I look at things, like if I'm trying to bid on something on eBay or take my sewing machines, for example, if I set my heart on a sewing machine that I want, the first one I did that was the Singer Rocketeer. Um, I just knew that I wanted it and I shopped and shopped and shopped until I found a good one for $50. They usually go about $200, but I don't get in a rush. To me, there's no end to the number of sewing machines that will come through my life that you can, you can get on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or go to garage sales or go to thrift stores. And there's going to be a, a sewing machine almost every single day for a reasonable price. And so I feel the same way about my fabrics. Um, there's very few of them that I'm so attached to that I absolutely couldn't let it go. Um, 
and like I still love this I still think it's beautiful I still think it would make a gorgeous jacket or you know something but um, a, a button front skirt would be super cute with big black buttons or red buttons but do I feel like I'm gonna sew with it in the next year or two no so that one I can let go of oh this is this might be silk it's a it's a lovely chamois kind of a gold color I can't tell if it's silk it's very ravelly but it's very pretty and it's kind of sheer and I think it would make if there's enough a beautiful um, pleated skirt or a tunic that's two layers let me show you one layer this is very pretty there are some spots on it I'm gonna wash this one and if this one it comes clean I'm gonna put it in the store okay so unless Troy or Wilson really beg me for a shirt made out of this I think I can let it go and You know, I've only made one wool thing and it's a coat and I made it a couple of years ago and I love it. But it's hard. I feel like Europeans sew with wool all the time. Um, I feel like it's too hot to wear inside, but on the other hand, it breathes. So I don't know. Put in the comments below whether you think I should keep this and try to make something with it or whether you're dying to have it and you want me to put it in the shop. It's a beautiful wool crepe. I'm going to put it in the keep pile for now. Got it for a decent price. Didn't pay too much for it. Okay. Let's see. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I've got six patterns in the D stash pile and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven patterns in pat fabrics in the keep pile. So that's not too bad. So, um, if I have the nerve during vlogmas, I will show you my sewing room. When I say, I said this in a video four months ago, that it's a shameful, shameful mess, a lot of you are like, oh, I know, mine is too. Girls, you have no idea. Mine looks like a hoarder lives here, a messy hoarder. And it got completely out of control, especially when I started the after school sewing club and I got a lot of donations and I haven't known where to put them. I can't keep them in my classroom at school because I don't want my classroom to be a mess. And so there's garbage bags full of fabric and um, little scraps and bits and pieces that I've got to go through and decide what to do with. And um, it's such a mess that I get completely overwhelmed and I don't know what to do. So what I do is I will scrape off the surface that I want and I'll use it. And then the next time I need, you know, that area, like to get to this box, Wilson and I had to move a couple of piles of fabric this big to get to the box and so that's one reason why I'm willing to let go of some of this stuff um, none of this was donated this is all mine I bought and paid for it and um, my donations I feel like they belong to the school they belong to my kids and so um, on the other hand um, if if I got rid of them I could take that money and spend it on my kids you know, maybe buy a new sewing machine or something, um, which we don't need because I donate sewing machines to my after school club all the time. But other little things we do need, like scissors. We need scissors desperately. Our scissors are awful. Um, 
So maybe I will go through some of those donations because if it's a satin or something, you're not going to put a sixth grader who's never sewn before uh, working with satin. I mean, that is going to be a disaster, polyester satin. And so I don't want them to not ever want to sew again. But I wanted to keep this video relatively short and here I am yammering on. Um, thank you for stopping by. I hope that you are having fun watching everyone's Vlogmas. I know it's only day two. Um, but I think it's a really exciting thing and I'm going to try to keep a lot of these shorter than this. Um, we'll see how I do. You guys know what a chatterbox I am. Um, Troy has been in San Antonio and he will be home in a couple of hours. And so that's exciting because he's been gone for a few days and um, Wilson and I are batching it. So you guys take care and I will see you tomorrow. Merry Christmas. <laughs> it's I'm um I'm the girl on Titanic. Kate Winslet coming to you live. Colorado, where the wind blows. It's a very dignified outfit. back is up around my neck. Okay, there we go.